Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Thank you for staying with us. Prices of commodities are going through the roof, but that is a good reason to engage. Is that a good reason rather to engage in exploitative pricing? Are there rules to regulate and guard against these sharp practices? What is the agency saddled with the responsibility of protecting consumers in Nigerian markets doing to ensure a level playing field between sellers and buyers? Well, for all of that, we're now being joined by Dr. Abdamu Abdullahi, the Acting Executive Vice Chairman of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Council. Good morning and welcome to The Morning Show. It's a pleasure to have you. Good morning. It's a pleasure being here. So let good morning to The Morning Show team. Thank good you very morning. much, sir. Now, let's go straight into it now. Mm -hmm. First off, I would like for you to elaborate on some of the strategies employed by the FCCPC to monitor and regulate pricing practices in retail stores across Nigeria, particularly amidst the economic challenges, with a specific focus on instances of customers' extortion and lack of tra transparency in pricing. Uh, on the backdrop of uh, the Sahad supermarket uh, in Abuja, what specific violations of pricing regulations prompted the FCCPC's intervention? Okay. Let's now go through, first and foremost, the ingredients of this, call, of this uh, case. <clears throat> there are, of course, a lot of uh, backlash from the, especially the social media. But what actually transpired is this. There is misleading pricing and lack of transparency in pricing. Section 1153 says an undertaking shall not require a consumer to pay a price for any good or service higher than the price displayed. displayed. This of Nuxia's business practice amounts to a violation of consumer's rights under the FCCPA. The FCCPC frowns at any and all of Nuxia's practices unscrupulous exploitation of consumers by companies or businesses. That's section 17S of the SCCPA. The mandate is very clear, to promote and to protect consumers' interests. And that's why we, we always routinely conduct spot checks on supermarkets, shopping malls, open markets. Businesses are expected to display transparent prices so consumers can make informed choices, which is section 18 18G of the SCPA. Consumers are entitled to fair dealings. Section 124 prohibits undertakings from using unfair tactics or any similar conducts against consumers in connection with the collection or payment for goods or services by a consumer. Displaying a lower price on the shelf and a higher price at the till is a misleading and unfair business practice which clearly is a violation of our act. Another thing is the failure to appear, because after commencement of the investigation, the commission issued the summons, question to section 33 of the SCPA, to some identified staff to attend and give evidence before the commission, which was on Monday, the 12th of February, 2024. Summons were duly served, as the identified staff without any cause failed and refused to appear before the commission in compliance with the summons. Thereby, they committed another offense under section 333 of the FCCPC. Consequently, pursuant to the powers of the commission, we are left with no but to go ahead and seal the premises until we are satisfied that the prices displayed on the goods are the same as the same prices at the till and there's transparency and consistency in the system. That is all that transpired. All right. Uh, can go ahead. Yes, yes, you can go ahead, Dr. Abdullahi, but just to uh, clarify, you've read out uh, what the act stipulates, uh, but in the case of the sad stores, yes. what exactly happened? And how come, uh, if you notice all these infractions, how come in 24 hours after, then they've been suddenly unsealed. Uh, did they settle with the, uh, with the commission or what actually happened? What transpired? 
There is nothing we have not had, but this commission is not known for those kind of practices. Fact is, we are supposed to correct behavior. Bad behavior leads to consequences. There is no way we can allow the such a practice to continue. What we did was to call in the senior management of these stores. They sat down with us, gave us a commitment letter that they will work with us and make sure that these things stop. Based on which we now signed an understanding of the legal services with their own lawyers. And they will not be of such behavior against that's one. And then we'll monitor them over the period of the next three months to ensure that they do the right thing. Mm. So that's exactly what happened. So by 7 p.m. that same day, the store was reopened. Thank you, sir. Um, but I really want us to go and talk about exactly what the infractions were, because we've seen, I saw a statement that you had previously saying that different prices were being charged at the till from the prices that were labeled. But people are talking about the economic realities in the country, which means that prices are fluctuating every day. The price of forex changes every day. Pound to, as we speak today, as last note was 2100 on the black market. On Monday, we're probably going to get a new price when we come to the Forex market opening, which means the price of stock is changing every single day for businesses. So is it realistic that prices which have been tagged a week or two weeks previously will still be the same prices at the till? Is it that businesses or supermarkets now should just not tag items with the price? and then give you a price at the till. Because if we say that they are infringing upon your act, which says that the price cannot be different at the till, which what is labeled, we also have to talk about the economic realities in this country. So I'm wondering if that was taken into account before this drastic action was taken. It is the responsibility of that supermarket to make sure that the actual price is displayed. They must be up to the, up their game and make sure that at every given moment, the right price is displayed. That's all we want them to do. The reality of the moment, notwithstanding, they must be up to the task of putting the right prices on the goods on display. So when you go to a till, you pay the exact price. Informed choices is the right of a, of a consumer. You have the right to look at the prices of things differently and decide on which one you want to buy. When you go to a till, it has to be the same price that's on the uh, shelf. That's all we're after. All right. Well, can you tell us um, about the way and manner in which these stores uh, were, were closed? And, and, you know, how did you come to know about the pricing in this particular store? Because I am sure that it, it wouldn't be just at stores that would be, you know, that would be going against these uh, uh, pricing uh, round tripping, if I would call it. Because what I understand is that the prices you know, and the counter are different from when they go to checkout. And even the store managers or the store attendees actually inflate the prices. Um, tell us how you, you know, you got the tip off of that particular store. And um, could this closure have been done in a, in a better way? There are conversations, you know, around, you know, human rights uh, violation as a result of, uh, of, of the closure of, of that store. Okay, the thing is, we conduct sports checks. That is part of our mandate. We do so almost on a daily basis. We go to different stores, different supermarkets, even open markets, to ensure that we uh, make sure that the uh, prices that are displayed are what are charged at the till. We go to the extent of picking the products, going to the till ourselves, to ensure that that is done. So. If Sahar Supermarket happens to be the one that for the first time we have found to have violated and we took the action we took, it doesn't mean that other violators are not in the market. It doesn't mean that we may not identify others. It doesn't mean that we have not identified others who have done what they are supposed to do by correct, making corrections. If Sahar Stores decided not to make the corrections and we identified this is the person that's in the store that gives out these goods. He knows the prices at which he gives out these goods. This is the person that goes to the, to, the, to the shelf and fixes prices. This is the person that puts 
improves these prices on the computers. This is person that is at the till and charges these prices as the consumer brings uh, or buys these products. A, B, C, D, come to the commission and defend yourselves. They refuse to come. They sent in a lawyer who from all education didn't even have an iota of an idea of what the violations were. So there was no position whatsoever to defend them. So therefore we didn't have a choice but to go there ourselves and ensure that the right thing is done. And the only way you can force them to do that is not to go there and stand with them throughout the day to ensure that they do the right thing, no. And when they refuse to come, you don't have a choice. You have to take the drastic action that you took. There's nothing wrong with sealing any supermarket if it does anything that violates the consumers, uh, the FCCPA. And what we have done is by no means against the law, is by no means against any human rights. We didn't abuse anybody's human rights. We didn't beat anybody up. And there is no way would indulge in such behavior. It is not in our mandate, we don't do it. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Adamu. Now, I want to ask how exactly the FCC, uh, FCCPC uh, intends on balancing this need to enforce fair pricing with ensuring that retailers can still continue to operate profitably within the market. Also, I wonder if your organization is looking to collaborate with stakeholders such as retail associations and consumer advocacy groups to address pricing concerns. Just as my colleague Adesua mentioned earlier, we are continuing to see the rise in the dollar and that in itself is affecting uh, uh, pricing. So how exactly will you promote transparency in the market? We agree that, uh, yes, things are happening and then the prices are really going through the roof. We also got the market, we also buy things. But the issue is there is no way we can control prices. It's not part of our act. And we are running a free economy, so to speak, deregulated. So there is no way we can now decide on how much products are sold. The best we can do is to make sure that we give a fair market uh, space so that uh, businesses can operate. It's not easy because retailers have decided to bring themselves up as associations and they go ahead and fix prices. That's again the law because it's more or less they're forming themselves into a cartel. Cartels are not allowed. Go to a village yam market, instead of going to every yam seller and buying at different prices, you find out that there's, there's an association that decides on what amount a tuba of rice, a tuba of yam should sell for, what amount a mudu of uh, rice or millet, whatever should sell for. That is not allowed. An association should not sit down and fix prices. So we are look at, looking at that, trying to find ways and means of breaking these cartels. Of course, there are other agencies which are charged with responsibilities in this, uh, also in this space. The Standard Organization of Nigeria is there to ensure that standards are complied with. Weights and measures, department, the ministry is there to ensure that all moodles are the same and they don't should change people in buying things. So we work together with all these uh, other agencies to ensure that there is a balanced space in the market so that prices would find their level instead of associations sitting down to fix prices. That's what we do. All right, Dr. Abdullahi, I'd like to quickly raise with you um, an issue that is indirectly related to uh, the subject matter of today. And, and we did raise it a couple of months ago uh, with your predecessor, Mr. Irukera, uh, when he was on this very program. And that has to do with um, business concerns, especially in the hospitality industry, being run by foreigners. And what we keep on witnessing particularly in some sections of Lagos, uh, is that such business concerns, <clears throat> sorry, um, are charging in dollars, and then sometimes they are discriminatory against Nigerians. I'm talking of restaurants, or even in specific instance, uh, a hotel. And in this instance, I'm talking about a Chinese business concern. We did raise this issue with Mr. Irukera, and he promised to look into it because the act empowers your commission 
to deal with such infractions. So I'm asking at this time that prices are going, you know, off the roof and everything, how will you deal with foreign business concerns that are hiding behind the fact that we can't charge people in Naira because Naira is not stable and therefore they are insisting on charging in dollars and sometimes they do not even allow Nigerians to be part of their restaurants to you know to come into their restaurant or even to come into a hotel that is situated in Lagos how will your commission deal with that situation okay uh, first and foremost let us establish that it's not really just the hospitality industry that uh, embarks or does this practice there are also schools that are charging dollars in Nigeria there are airlines that for some time, we are also charging dollars, which was something that we had to now collaborate with the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority only last week to call in these airlines, discuss individually and collectively with all of them, and tell them that this is not allowed in this country. You must sell your tickets in Naira. Yes, prices are going through the roof, but you must also open your lower inventories. Your claim is that your funds are stuck with government, no, your funds are with your commercial banks and whichever have gone to government for Forex, government has already dealt with them. So since government has shown this goodwill, there's no way that you too must, uh, should not also reciprocate and do that. If you have noticed, the cost of uh, tickets have started coming down because the lower inventories have been opened. In the same manner as my predecessor uh, has already explained, which is in tandem, and in line with the agenda of this government. There is no way we can allow our own currency to be uh, at the mercy of the dollar, which is the case at the moment. I'm sure the CBN, which has the mandate to ensure that these practices don't, uh, don't uh, happen, and who also have the law, are on top of the situation, all we have to do is to ensure that whenever we get complaints, as in the complaint that you now uh, lodged with my predecessor, I uh, looked into, and we bring in these uh, sector regulators that have the mandate to look at the law and apply the full wrath of the law on whoever violates. And yes, these are things that require lots of investigations. You have to plan some people to go to these uh, hotels that do that, or these restaurants that do what, they are, what, what you say they do, so that we'll establish. Once we establish, we make sure that we follow the rules to the letter and they are brought to book. We have done a lot of investigations in all sorts of areas. What we do is go to a court, get a search warrant, and conduct down raids on these places and ensure that we get all the information we need, come back, sift through, find out any violations, and met out sanctions. That will have to continue. There's no way about it. Bad behavior must have consequences. We have the will, we have the capacity, and we have the determination. All we have to continue to uh, pray is that people would keep bringing their complaints to us and we'll take it up. In this particular instance, I would say yes, the, my predecessor uh, briefed us because I, uh, I've been heading the uh, operations as an executive commissioner all this while, and I'm just overseeing the uh, commission for now. So whatever it was that Mr. Urikura did, we did together. And this investigation had continued, and we'll make sure we do what we are supposed to do by establishing that these practices happen, and then consequences must also follow. I give my assurances. Well, all right. Uh, let, let's now um, talk about the uh, the ban of uh, you know sachet alcohol, uh, PET, and uh, you know glass uh, bottles below two hundred um, uh, milliliters. Well. Members of uh, Distillers and uh, Blenders Association of Nigeria, as you have seen, they've been out protesting uh, this ban on, on, on sachet alcohol, when in actual fact their members uh, participated in the preparation of a memorandum of understanding back in 2018 between the federal government, the Ministry of Health, NAVDAC, 
your commission and association of food uh, uh, beverages and tobacco employers to stop the sale of these items. But we are seeing this sort of a disconnect. We are seeing these people on the street. Um, in January 2022, NAVDAC said that it had halted the registration of alcoholic beverages as well. And also in February 2024, the um, agency commenced the implementation of the ban by shutting down some factories where these sachet drinks were manufactured. But we are seeing this disconnect. Where do you think it's coming from? And what is your agency doing, your commission rather, doing to protect these um, young children? Because one of the reasons for this ban or the, 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 the stop for the sale of these alcohol is because it affects our youth. These little sachet, they go into their purses and they are out on the, you know, in school, on the streets, drinking. What is your commission doing? I mean, this has been going on. I mean, this whole secular started back in 2018. I know that you have just been recently appointed. What is your commission doing to protect our youth in this whole charade? As you rightly pointed out, we are part and parcel of the uh, agreement that was reached along with these producers that uh, the sachet alcohol is doing a lot of harm to both uh, our underage, as well as the sale in the motor parks has led to serious accidents because drivers now have direct access to alcohol in the motor parks and they drink and before you know it, accidents happen. So we sat together, of course, these uh, regulations were, came out because they were in tandem, they agreed that this is the way, the, the way things should go. So all of us were surprised the same way that you, have, you are expressing your surprise now when they are now coming out to say that no, uh, they don't want this to happen. However, the law is the law. So we would ensure that the law is applied. And the only way to catch this uh, practice is to make sure we get at the manufacturers or the importers so that we block uh, the entrance of these uh, products into the market. But then we have to go further down and ensure that the, the, uh, whoever has these goods and is selling, especially to the underage, uh, stops the practice. And if they don't, they face consequences. This is uh, something that we have in our mind that I'm not ready to expose here. But who would go into uh, such raids, enforcement, investigations, to ensure that the right thing is done. Law is law, and it must be uh, carried out, and bad behavior must be sanctioned. Would do it, we assure you. What about regulations in terms of you know, age limits and all of that for our youth? Is that something that the commission would try to implement at this moment? As you rightly mentioned, the whole investigation and the decision was reached in tandem with some other regulatory agencies, especially NAVDAC. This is more or less a NAVDAC uh, assignment, really. We are only supporting. But as I said earlier, we are the apex regulatory body in the country. We make sure that the right thing is done. And whenever we see anything that's going wrong, we draw the attention of the sector regulator. And if nothing happens, we now work together since we have signed MOUs with them. In fact, with NAVDA, we have an MOU, a subsisting MOU. So we work together in this investigation and in the enforcement of ensuring that the underage don't do what they're supposed to do. If you have noticed that this uh, advert that are ongoing at the moment, this campaign that we have started on the issue of uh, underage children smoking, and we have the Don't Ban Their Future campaign that's ongoing, adverts have started being rolled out, Banners are on, on uh, even on buses in Lagos and uh, Abuja streets. Uh, we have seen uh, some banners in supermarkets in Lagos, in Port Harcourt, and they are coming, going to be all over the country. Advocacy is ongoing. We have, uh, we have plans to also embark on all sorts of uh, town hall meetings in schools, in town, so that we bring in people and make sure that they understand the dangers of underage smoking. Nigeria loses about 38,000 uh, 38, uh, lives 
every year due to this uh, smoke inhalation. And we will not sit down, fold our arms, and allow such things to happen. Yes, In the same manner that alcohol is now uh, doing what it's doing to our youth, mm -hmm. we have to sit up and do the right thing. And we have the capacity, we'll do it. Thank you, sir. So I want to talk about something that has been going around on social media recently. The federal government has been talking about wholesalers hoarding goods, hoarding goods so that they have they benefit from scarcity in the market personally. Now, I want to ask, how do you differentiate between a wholesaler or a business that's hoarding product from a wholesaler who's stocking goods for distribution, preventing price shocks in the market, and making sure that there's a constant supply of goods to consumers? How, because we see these videos that are going around now with the Kano state government as well as the federal government of just warehouses but how do we we can't visually tell if this is a wholesaler who just has a large amount of stock versus if this is someone who's hoarding so as the fccpc how do you differentiate between the two we must have trust in our uh, security agencies these security agencies have been watching out they know where these goods have been stored they know the movement in and out of goods. If you carry goods and have been keeping them in a warehouse for the past two, three months, there's no movement, those goods are not being supplied to the market at any point in time, then obviously you are holding these goods. So what we intend to do is to, of course, go into uh, partnerships with all these agencies, the police, of course, the uh, DSS, NIA and other security agencies such as this that have that information. But more especially, the Minister of Agri is uh, in the picture of who these people really are because of the fact that uh, all these uh, grain silos you see where food security items are being kept are being bought off farmers, but then also uh, at points through middlemen. So these middlemen that now sell these grains to the government for food security would also or have been under the watch. And all we are trying to do is to ensure that these goods reach the market. We're not trying to decide at what prices they sell, but let them flood the markets with these goods. That will now ensure that this good find a lower price than they are being sold at the, at the moment. They are creating a necessary scarcity, which of course, leads to higher prices. And this, that's not something to be encouraged at all. So this uh, collaboration has to continue. And this is a program that uh, all hands must be on deck to ensure that we succeed. We have to keep appealing to the general public. Whenever they see something, as the slogan goes, say something. Report to the agencies. Tell us what movements or lack of movements you see pertaining to uh, food stores that people have hidden food items in and which, uh, from all indications, they are trying to hold those items until they get higher prices in the market. It's a bad practice and it must be stopped at all costs because it has uh, more or less distorted prices in our markets. And we are seeing uh, so much suffering in the country at the moment due to the fact that some selfish interests have decided to feed fat on the uh, on, on, on our general publics who are suffering, who are going through so much suffering in this country at the moment. So that's the way we want to go about it, through collaboration with other agencies. There are, of course, higher authorities to us, but then this in tandem with uh, Mr. President's new uh, hope agenda, and we give our full backing to it. There is a senior committee at presidential level that is looking at all the things. And of course, we are ready and we work together with this senior committee. The ministerial committee is also there under the leadership of our permanent secretary, all right. who I member. And we have been sharing ideas on how to go about this uh, major problem, major, right. major problem that this country has found itself in at the moment. All right, Dr. Adamo Abdullahi. Um, Acting Executive Chair of the FCCPC, that's a good place 
to end it. And we must thank you indeed uh, for that enlightening uh, conversation. Thank you indeed.